Hey, welcome back guys. So in this series, we went ahead and covered lots of different flows on how to automate the Amazon website using WebDriver IO. Now this is gonna be the final video of the series where we're gonna go ahead and update our cart to make sure we change our item from one to two. And then we simply make sure that the amount get updated as well. So let's go ahead and start implementing that. So I'm gonna head back to Amazon. Now I'm back here where we left in our previous video where I've added the item to the cart. So over here, we're gonna click on go to cart or maybe we can click on this cart icon here. So let's go with this one. I'm gonna click on the cart. And from here, I'm gonna change the quantity from one. I'm gonna change it to two. The moment I will change that, remember that subtitle is gonna get updated. So I'm gonna change it to two here. Now, as you can notice, the subtitle, subtotal has been changed now. So that's pretty much are going to be our next test. Pretty simple, simply from where we left off previously, all you have to do is click on the cart icon. From there, change the quantity from one to two. And then you have to make sure that the subtitle has been updated. Now, again, you don't have to verify the exact text because then that would mean doing a calculation. You will have to pass that string to a number. Then you'll have to do the math to make sure it's times two and so on. That's going to be too complicated. You don't have to worry about doing that. And they would probably not ask you to do in the interview as well. All you have to do is make sure that the quantity has been changed. It's no longer 1699.95. So it should not match what the original quantity was. It should change to something new. And it doesn't matter what it changed to, as long as it gets updated, that's all we care about for this particular test. So how would you achieve this? Well, in this case, we're gonna have to work with negative assertions. If you haven't done that, that's something new that we're gonna be covering in this video. So we can use something like not to equal or not to have text. That's what we're gonna cover in this video. So again, pause this video, try this out on your own. This should be comparatively straightforward. And once you're done, then we're gonna come back and I'll show you how I will do this. All right, so how was this exercise, guys? I hope this wasn't too difficult. So let me show you how I would do this. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is get access to this cart item. So let me just copy that. All right, so this cart is, has an ID of nav cart and it is, let's copy this here, and it is unique as well. So that's what we're gonna use. So I'm gonna head back to VS Code and I will add in a new it block. Now this time we are adding a dependent test. That means the new test is gonna be dependent on this one. It's not the best way to do it, but assuming you're part of, let's say in an interview flow, you can explain them that, hey, I'm adding a dependent test. Ideally, you wanna have your test isolated. So it's not really dependent on any other test. But for now, it's fine. We'll just say update to cart or update cart item, cart quantity actually. Let's change it to async. And then I'll just do await. Hopefully by now you should know how to handle all of this. So we'll just do dot click. Now, once we have clicked on this, the next thing we have to do is change the quantity from one to two. So let's do that as well. So to do that, you have to first click on this quantity item. So let's find the element for that. All right, so we seem to have an ID for that, which is a select ID quantity. So we can use that. So I can copy this quantity, paste it here. All right, we can use this. Or maybe if you wanna use something else, not really use an ID, you can change it to select name equals quantity. That's totally fine as well. And in our case, quantity is easy. Let's just go with that. So we're gonna do same thing over here, await dollar quantity dot click again. All right, so this will open up the cart quantity. And once we have that, we wanna go ahead and select the one that we want. So in our case, you wanna select, let's say number two. So maybe we can do right click there and do inspect. All right, there you can see right here, it is actually part of a UL, which is the unordered list. Within that unordered list, we have different quantities. So quantity zero, quantity one, and you can see it's nicely tagged with an ID two. So we can just copy that as well. So I'll just do quantity two with an ID. And there you go. So once I do that, I can go ahead and access this. And there's two of these. So let's see which one we need. So it seems like we need this one. So I can probably do you all quantity two. Well, both are same. So I think that should be fine. So let's just go with this one. We'll pick the first one from there. I'm gonna do await dollar quantity two dot click again. So this one pretty seems straightforward, right? All we are doing is simply just doing click here, click here, do this, do that. So it's not as complicated as the previous ones where we had to work with very different elements. Now, finally, this will update our subtotal. So we need to get the subtotal element and I can store it over here. So I'll just do updated subtotal. And then we can store it over here. So I just do await dollar and I need that element. So that element is gonna be right here. So this one has an ID, which is again, so nice for us. 
and this is a span most likely yep so that's a span so let's just copy this and go back to VS code and paste it right here now I know I'm going this like in a pretty fast pace if you again you are someone that's on a beginner level that don't really understand how I'm working with these elements or how I'm picking it up and making all these changes quickly then for that guys I recommend check out the course because there I go a lot more in slower pace and I go through everything step by step explaining you this is from a mindset of let's say zooming in an interview this is how you're going to be quickly going ahead and showing them the changes and making sure you're making progress so that you're not stuck with this figuring out one element and taking like the entire interview just trying to figure out that element so that's how you should be working when you are let's say in an interview process now finally we're going to go ahead and verify that the text is updated so we can just do await and i can do let's say expect my updated sub subtotal and then here is where so far we have been doing let's say it should have text or it should equal to blah 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 right maybe let's say i do it should equal to my device price so that's device price now by the way the device price is not accessible right now to us because it's not part of this scope now what i can do is create a new variable here called device price now this is going to be global i can copy this remove this from here now this device price is going to get accessible over here as part of my add to cart now i will have access to this over here as well so that's good so i'm saying expect my updated subtotal should equal instead of should equal or to equal i'm going to say it should not equal to the device price so this is how you do negative assertions so i'm saying well instead of verifying that it should equal to this i'm saying no it should not equal because i've just updated the subtotal so it should be changed to some, something else oh sorry i just updated the quantity so it should be changed to something else let's run this to make sure whether this works so to run this we have to run the whole thing again to because everything is kind of connected with each other so it will add the item to the cart here it should now go to cart there you go all right now here it should go ahead and change the quantity so it seems like that didn't happen so something went wrong let's see what happened there so it's saying element click intercepted element select name quantity is probably it's not able to access because the click got intercepted all right so that means it was trying to click on quantity but it got intercepted and it was not able to access that and it's saying other element would receive the click and it's actually telling you which element is receiving the click so instead of quantity it's saying some other element is actually receiving the click and the element that it mentioned is right over here and there's also an id for that which is this auto id announce and that's okay because what's happening is maybe there's an element that's on top of that so if we go back to our chrome and if i search for this and since we already have item in the cart let's just refresh and i'm going to change this to let's say one refresh here and there you go when we're trying to do a click on the quantity it's saying this is the one that's receiving the click and that's okay because even if i click on this one it's still clicking on the quantity so i'm simply going to go ahead and just replace that with this id and this is good that we came across this error and because most likely if you have similar issues you just have to see which element it's clicking and if it's fine to use that element if it's not then you do something else maybe change the state of the application so that you have you're able to access the element that you want in my case the state is fine so all i have to do is simply replace it to this one all right now let's run it again and to see whether it would work this time and there you go this time our test passed successfully so that's perfect now let's just verify that if i change this to two equal then it should not pass it should actually fail just to make sure that we are doing this correctly and there you go this time it failed and if i just hover over here you can notice it's saying that instead of expecting the device price i'm getting this entire element back oh i just realized i made a mistake here so instead of this updated subtotal the reason the previous test passed was because obviously this expected is not matching the received see that's one of the reason you should always try to fail your test because when you fail it you know that your assertions are doing what it's supposed to in my case instead of adding in the text i simply pasted the entire element so it's obviously when i say the element should not match the text it is never matching so it's failing uh, so the assertion was passing because i was saying it should not be equal but when i change it to equal i'm able to see that oops i'm actually testing totally something different so this should actually be dot get text because i want to make sure i get the text from that element not just simply automate or not just simply take that element and verify it as a price 
I hope that makes sense because before I was simply just taking the entire element. Now I'm taking the text from that element. Now let's just make sure this works this time. So I'm going to run through this again. All right, so I ran this and if you notice the test actually passed, which is weird, right? Because I updated the quantity. So the test should not have passed. But if you notice the result I got back is 1699.95. That means even after updated, the text is still the same. So why is that happening? Because we updated it right over here. We changed the quantity. Well, the most likely the reason for that is by the time this was changing, it went right away to the next one. So the DOM didn't really get loaded. So, you know, it takes some time for the DOM's text to get updated. So I'm pretty sure if I change this to, let's say, await and add some kind of pause here, maybe let's just wait one second, right? And after that, we're going to try to get the text. This time our test should fail and it should say that, oh, the updated price does not match the device price. And there you go. So this time, as you can see, my expected does not match the received. And that's what we want, right? Because we've changed the quantity, so that should not match whatever my expected was, which was the device price. So this was due to a timing issue. So we need to resolve this timing issue. Well, one way is this hard-coded pause, which is not a good way to do it. So I can remove that. And instead of doing this, let's say two equal, maybe I can use something like to have text, right? Because we have been using that. So I can say to have text. And what this will do is it will automatically wait until the text matches to what we want. So in my case, I'm going to do not to have text because we want it to get updated to a new text. So it will keep waiting until the text get updated. And this way, I don't have to do dot get text because whenever it will come to this line, it will first get the text for this and it will compare the text with this one. So the very first run, it's going to say that, oh, the text still matches 1699 matches 1699 again. So it's going to poll for 100 seconds, or well, basically it will wait for 100 milliseconds, and then it will try again. Does it still match? If it still does, it's going to wait again. After 100 milliseconds, it will keep checking. So it will have this retry functionality and keep checking until the text gets updated or until it times out. So that's what we're going to implement with this logic. Let's run this to make sure this works. So this is, by the way, how expect assertions work. If you want to learn more about how they work, I have, again, covered this in my course. So you can go ahead and check it out over there. I will add the link for that in the description below for you guys to check it out. And there you go. This time my test passed successfully. And if I scroll up, you're going to notice I'm getting the right result back. Instead of 1699, I'm getting 13, uh, 3399 back. So that's good. That means my test is working as expected. All right, so to quickly summarize, guys, we came across two main issues here. The first one was the element that we were picking up was not really the right one. So we were getting element click intercepted. So we had to go ahead and pick the element that it was suggesting us. So we just went with that because it worked in our case. In your case, it might not work because some other element is coming on top of your element. So you need to plus first close that and then be able to access your element. Now, the next thing was the subtotal. So we were having the issue with the timing. So we would resolve that by using WebDriver's IO expect assertion, which is dot to have text, and we use negative assertion by adding dot not. We'll say, hey, keep doing polling until the text gets updated. With that, it's a wrap for this series, guys. We covered lots of different flows. We started off with writing, uh, setting up a project, writing basic text. We looked into how to, let's say, search for contact, verify the results, how to handle auto suggestions. And then we went through this entire cart flow from adding item to the cart, working with hidden elements, updating the cart quantity, and then handling, let's say, the weight and how to get rid of hard-coded pause by implementing assertions such as expect assertions and so on. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this series. And if you want me to create similar series on other frameworks or you want me to cover different logic with WebDriver IO, let me know in the comments below. I can go ahead and create those videos as well. And I know I went through this pretty quickly, but the point of this was to kind of show you that during an interview process, they might ask you some of these different questions. So you really need to be prepared and understand how to do this in whenever you come across in an interview or whether you come across in an actual job where you will be working as an automation engineer. Now, it's OK if you don't really know something totally, that's fine. Just tell that to your interviewer and they will understand or you can ask them for some help. Plus, they will be guiding you throughout the way if you get stuck somewhere. So if you enjoyed this video, guys, let me know in the comments below. And at the same time, please make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel to keep supporting this channel further. As a final note, all the code that we covered in this series will be accessible to you guys. Simply go ahead and access the link in the description. And then you'll be asked to enter your email where you will get access to the entire code base.
Now, if you want to deep dive into WebDriver IO as well as other courses as well, such as doing WebDriver IO with mobile automation using Appium or maybe learn API automation with TypeScript and so on, I have covered all of these things and more as part of my academy. So go to sgtunicorns.com where you will get take a look at all the courses that I have covered over there. Plus, you get direct support from me there as well whenever you get stuck during a learning experience. That's all for now, guys. I will see you all in the next one.